Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome once again to the Learning Freedom channel. Be free to learn. Our subject today is information and communication technology. Today we are going to review the virtual mock organized by GB80. This is the question review number two. And today's video is a part two of a series of three videos that are focused on the virtual mock. If you have not watched the first part, please check in the description below for the link or check at the right side for the video. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, kindly click on the button, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you are notified anytime that we have a new video. So, let's start. <coughs> the first question, question 2a, define information processing cycle. What is information processing cycle? Information processing cycle is the sequence of events that data goes through in order to become a meaningful and useful information. So that is information processing cycle. Now let's look at a quick reminder. The stages of the information processing cycle. We have the input stage, the first one, followed by the processing stage, the output stage, the storage stage, and the communication or distribution stage. Now this picture that you are going to see is just a summary of the information processing cycle with all the stages. So the first one is the input stage where data is accepted. The second one is processing stage where data is processed into information. And the third stage is the output where yeah, the user receives the results of data processing. And then the fourth one is the storage stage where data is saved for future use and then in between them you have the communication or distribution stage where data can be moved from one place to another. Let's move to the next question. That is 2AII. The list two importances of information. Two importance of information. First one that you want to talk about is information is an aid in decision making. So information helps in decision making. Information increases the ability of personal knowledge for the recipient. So if you have information, then you are learning something on your own. So information generates new information, new knowledge, and new theories. Another point, information helps professionals to do their works more effectively and efficiently. Information supports research in order to obtain effective and fruitful results. Let's continue. Information also helps in better management. Information helps in solving problems. Information helps in planning. Information helps in recording and documentation. Information helps in avoiding the duplication of research. So somebody has done something already, you don't have to go through the same process again. The information is there, you just go and then check it. Information also stimulates the thought process of the user. So you have a new information, you can think of something better. <coughs> information helps people to get information with current advancements and stay up to date. Question 2B now. Pick the following with their correct explanation. So we are having a matching job to do here. We have green, we have Tezros, we have go to blue and then red. The first one, color wavy lines when there are spacing errors in a document. Spacing errors just means that maybe you, you are supposed to press the space bar only once where you press it twice or many times. So what should hint you that there is a mistake there? So that color is blue. The next one, color wavy lines when there are spelling errors in a document. That color is red. The next one, color wavy lines when there are grammatical errors in a document. 
and that one is green the command used to improve vocabulary is the tizros command the next one the command used to move to a specific page number session line table and so on on in a word document is go to just a quick reminder now in office 2003 2007 and 2010 we are having only red and green wavy lines so the red wavy line is under words to indicate the spelling mistake and the green wavy line is under words to indicate grammatical errors or spacing errors but in office 2013 and 2016 They've introduced the blue lines. The blue lines were used for spacing error. The red was still for spelling mistake and the green for grammatical error. But now in Office 2019, we have double blue line and the words to notify of grammatical errors. And then the red is for spelling mistakes. The blue line also notify for double blue line, sorry, notify for spacing sticks so just keep that in mind let's move to the next part which is question number 2c the i says define file management so what is file management file management is the process of manipulating files in the computer system by creating modifying and deleting them you can also say that File management involves how we name, how we rename, how we delete and organize, and how we arrange files and folders in the computer system. So that is file management. Now question 2C, I, I. State four characters that cannot be used for file names. Four characters that we cannot use when you are naming a file. The first one is the less than, the less than sign. The second one is the greater than sign. These two signs are known as angle brackets. Then we have the colon, the colon sign. We have the double quote sign. We have the forward slash and then the backslash. And we have the vertical bar or pipe. And then we have the question mark, the question mark. So these symbols cannot be used, or these characters cannot be used when we are naming a file. So that is it for question number two. The next one is question number three. Let's move to question number three. Let's start with question number three A explain the following explain the following the first thing we are going to explain is disk cleanup disk cleanup so this cleanup is a computer utility that searches and analyzes a computer hard drive for unused and unnecessary files and then removes them in order to free up disk space so the purpose of this cleanup is just to free up this space so that you have more space on your hard disk the next thing you are going to define is defragmentation defragmentation what is defragmentation now defragmentation in the new versions of windows is known as optimization so it is a utility that rearrange and regroups scattered files stored on a computer disk in order to increase data access speed so usually when saving a file a program may have a header saved somewhere the body saved somewhere then the last part saved somewhere but defragmentation will group everything that belongs to a particular file and then we'll group all files that belong to the same program so that it is easy for a program to access files then it increases the speed of access now let's look at how we can use this cleanup and this defragmentation the first thing to do is to open my computer or computer or this pc depending on the version of windows you are using 
the second thing you locate the disk that you want to clean up or defragment you just right click on it and then down the option you have properties and the properties when the dialog box opens you have um, under the secu a general tab you just go down and then you see this clean up and you click on it when you click on it it will open another dialog box for you where you can select or deselect what you want to clean up when you finish you just click on ok let me click on ok it will just do the cleanup for you for the fragmentation you go to the next tab that is the tools tab here you have optimize so optimize is the way that is used now for the fragmentation so you click on optimize and you have the drives here you choose the one that you want to defragment and then you click on optimize when you finish clicking on optimize it will take you through the process it takes a little bit of time so you wait for that that is how you do this cleanup and this defragmentation now question number three b i what is a patent a patent is a right granted to an inventor by a government and that right permits the inventor to exclude other people from making selling or using the invention for a period of time and the patent system is designed to encourage inventions that are unique and useful to society so that is a patent next question 3b i i it says state two ethics that you can observe as a computer user two ethics that you can observe as a computer user before you answer the question let's have a reminder computer ethics are a set of moral standards that govern the use of computers so that is ethics of computers or computer ethics now let's look at the ethics the first one we group them in three categories the first one is the privacy concerns you have to avoid unlawful intrusion into a computer or a network unlawful intrusion into a computer or a network that is commonly known as hacking so avoid hacking next one avoid sharing malicious software or malware created to impair a computer system so avoid sharing viruses next point is about intellectual property right so avoid copying and publishing another person's work without proper citation which is plagiarism so if you take words from somebody just be kind and notify others that this one that i'm talking about is from this person and avoid skipping the registration and authentication steps when installing a software that is cracking usually people will just use people's software without buying them so they just rely on cracks so that is not a proper thing or a good ethics in using computers so avoid that one next one is effect on society save energy by limiting computer time and turning off the computer when not in use when you are not using a computer just put it off and when not needed just put your computer off and do something else and avoid scamming or defrauding people using the computer next question question 3 c i say explain attachment as used in email email attachment is simply any file that is sent along with an email message so if you have your text message as email and then you want to send a picture to somebody that picture becomes an email attachment if it is a document that document is an email attachment so that is email attachment let's look at the next question 3cii it says list three main files that can 
be attached to an email the first one we can talk about is the image file or pictures pictures are mostly attached to emails we have document files document files are also attached to emails more often audio files or music files are also attached to emails we have video files or video clips are also attached to emails but you can also attach programs to emails you can also attach programs to emails so this also brings us to the end of the question number three thank you all for watching this video click on the description for a link to all related videos don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos and click on the notification bell so that you get notified anytime you have a new video and also like this video give us a thumb up if you think that is a good one and share with your friends so that they also benefit from it and also comment comment give us your points of views give us your suggestions and any question that you have just comment below and thank you once again for watching